This is a Hot Pie Original. Welcome to Paranormally, a place where we investigate and discover paranormal activity that happens normally, quietly filed in between the pages of our daily lives. Join us as we learn through experiences in history of paranormal investigators, clairvoyants, and mediums who try to solve my paranormal mysteries and maybe some of yours as well. Have you had that feeling you were being watched but no one's there? A cool wisp of air that seems to go right through you and leaves chills down your back? Maybe it's more than coincidence, more than your mind playing tricks. Maybe your life is also part of a paranormally world. My name is Arendale, and over six years ago, my wife and I moved with our five kids into a house five miles outside of town on an old state highway. That stretch of Old Route 2 has plenty of its own legends through the years, being dubbed Dead Man's Alley a century ago for a series of mysterious accidents. The three and a half acres the house sits on has one of the sharpest train curves in the world wrapped around half of it, a spectacle that brings people from states away to see the legendary curve that has also been the host of several train crashes through the early 1900s. The house itself is surrounded by rumors and legends through its 150 plus years in existence that tie it to the Underground Railroad, the KKK, and years as an old tavern style motel after the railroad tracks went in during the Civil War era. Since moving into the house, we have been witness to several unbelievable, paranormal things that we are now trying to find answers for. And that brings us to the Paranormally Podcast with special guests, paranormal co hosts, and plenty of truth that is hard to believe. Welcome back to Paranormally. I'm Aaron Dale, well, along with our paranormal investigators, Josiah and Steve. And guys, uh, to say this is an episode unlike any other would be, I think, an understatement for me on Paranormally because I'm really pissed off right now. So what, uh, what's going on? <laughs> okay, so I've kind of texted you guys a little bit. Uh, of what's been going on the last couple weeks. Since we were in quarantine, uh, where we were all home, and all of a sudden, uh, you know, we hadn't really had anything paranormal happen in a long time. I mean, it has been a long time. It's, you know, three to four months, and that's always kind of how it's been. And then it will get it would get, like, hot, where we'd have a few things happen, and then it would go away again. And right now, we are, like, steaming hot and have been for way longer than we ever have been before. Um, so, the reason I'm pissed off is because I just coughed up $256 to get a truck key made. Because I didn't have a spare, which is my own stupid fault. Fair enough. But my truck key, another key on the ring, and a fob for the truck went missing i got home with the truck i was in a hurry to get into my car and get back to the radio station for my production time from two to three um and somehow i ran in the house i didn't go any farther than the bathroom which means i went through the stairway the kitchen and the bathroom i went in the back door okay and i'm telling you guys you guys know my house so i can tell you this and you understand what i'm doing um i uh i was in i went in the garage and grabbed a water and that was it. And as far as I knew, I put my truck keys on them. I don't like having extra keys in my pocket. So I put my truck keys on the microwave like I always do. Sure. And, you know, that's just what I do. And I've had this truck for two years. And knock on wood, or I guess I don't even have to say that anymore, because I just lost my damn truck key, even though I've never lost a vehicle key in my life and now that's not to say there's not a first time for everything but you know it's a little unusual especially since i have a very the same routine every time with my keys because i don't like to lose anything let alone my keys right so this being known uh my wife's keys had gone missing and then re-showed up on the dining room table and i nine days i went without my truck i was waiting waiting for those truck keys to show up on the table. Sure. And then I would have probably been calling you guys down to exercise the demons or something. Cause I, I was, I'm st I'm just pissed. I mean, $250 is a lot of money. And I feel like, and I told my wife this last night, I'm like, it's a damn ghost. You know, it is. I said, it's because I mean, I, really we're talking about a pretty small area of space, right? To, to search. I mean, 
and and we searched the truck, the car, the garage, completely clean the garage, back stairway, everything, all the coats, all the pockets, all the shoes. Like, did I somehow drop them in a parish in a shoe that was out in the landing? You know, I mean, I went to the extreme. I mean, I moved out the fridge. I I didn't mess around here. You know, I mean, there wasn't like, well, I looked, I didn't see it, man. You know, we, I even put a hundred dollar bounty. Once I found out how much it was going to be to get a new key made, I told the kids I would drop them a hundred if they could find the keys for, you know, and so they were search. I mean, you know, got a lot of different hands and eyes on this thing, trying to get it done and, uh, couldn't do it. And finally I just had had enough. I needed my truck back. So I coughed up the money to get a new key made. And I had a spare made, and I'm leaving that at my office. Thank you very much. <laughs> and I'm sure those keys will be on the dining room table when I go home. Wow. Yeah, if they I, I are, you'll be hearing from me. <laughs> well, I, wouldn't be, I wouldn't be surprised if they did turn up, and they turned up in such an obvious area, there's no way you could have yeah. missed it. You know, I, with, with a lot of people, hearing that story, I would just kind of chuckle and say, yeah, they misplaced it, whatever, whatever. But it sounds like you're a creature of habit. You're very organized. And now really I'm not very, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not the most, I, like my desk is messy, you know, at work. <laughs> like I'm not, I'm not like the old guy where everything is like, you know, dusted underneath or something like I'm, I don't know. I, I'm not crazy, but there's certain things, my phone, my money clip ID thing that I put in my pocket and my keys. I check sure. for them constantly. When, when cell phones first became a thing, I would lose my phone a lot. I trained myself not to do that because it's just it's damn frustrating. So my wife loses her phone all the time, never knows where it is, and uh, which is whatever. I can at least I know I have mine, so I can call hers. You know. Sure. But you know, I, I'm not trying to say I'm Mr. Super Organized. I'm sorry to cut you off, but you know, with certain things, you know, there's certain things like keys that you need you need to know where they are and they're usually in your pocket so anyway proceed steve i apologize oh no that's right i, I was just just saying that you know with, with most people you would just kind of assume ah, i'm sure they just misplaced it but yes you know you you always put your keys in the same spot you know you realize the importance of the things you need every time you exit the house so yeah i would say in your case that there's a high probability especially since other things have happened similar to that that your keys are in the the ether right now, you know. <laughs> yeah, and it'll just squirt out somewhere and be like, eh, "Here you go." <laughs> <laughs> Getting mad. So another okay. So other things that we've and this is not all. This is the tip of the iceberg, really, um, or the cherry on the cake, or however you want to look at it. But uh, I have. Let's see. We had eight, uh, an eight piece bowl set, like pretty nice ceramic bowls, you know, to eat out of and stuff. We have two now. Whoa. Did, did they break or did they just vaporize, disappear again? Um, we don't know. No, they didn't break. Okay. They're just gone. Wow. And the, do the kids ever take them upstairs to eat or anything, Aaron, or is it pretty unusual? Um, yeah, they do, but we've searched. You know, I mean, we've gone through their rooms. Okay. Six of them, though. I can understand one, yeah. which is very two, but three quarters of your set gone. That's crazy. Yeah, it's not like an envelope where it can just slide under something, you know. Right. And then forks. I mean, we were down to like five forks somehow. And same thing, search the kids' rooms, just gone. Oh. Weird. Yeah. Okay. I'm <laughs> still not done. Uh, okay. So, also, <laughs> I'm. I'm sitting with my daughter. She's showing me something on my phone because she likes to look at pictures and stuff on there. Sure. And we've got Big City Greens, the cartoon on. And it's the one where, uh, I don't know, Tilly and Remy are doing like a little mini theater outside of the theater to try and entertain the people in line. And in one of the parts, the little boy dresses up as a ghost. He's got a ghost outfit on. Yeah. And so I'm talking to my daughter... And all of a sudden, there's a lamp right by the TV to the left of it. It's got the three-click thing, you know, where it's bright, brighter, brightest, or whatever. Yeah. So all of a sudden, the lamp clicks through all, all three settings back to the setting it was on. And I look up, and the little boy's dressed as a ghost on the screen. 
Wow. Now, is that something? Is that weird? Because that seemed pretty weird to me. That one kind of gave me the shivers. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, the timing of that, you know, I, I mean, just it doing it, the light doing that in general is, is crazy enough. But the fact that they're showing a ghost on the screen, it's almost as if, hey, look, you know, that's me right there, you know. And it ties back into that little kid theory, you know. What, it was, a, was it a cartoon, Aaron? I'm not familiar with it. Yeah, it's a cartoon. Okay, yeah, I mean, that kind of ties right back into that in my mind. I think you guys should watch this Scooby-Doo and see if things happen every episode, you know? <laughs> I know, right? It's like, and I would have got away with it, too, if it wasn't for you pesky kids. I don't know who old Mr. Withers is going to be or whatever, but I am just, man, I am I am just fit to be tied over this thing right now. I am, I am pissed off. <clears throat> I see why people get to the point where they want to take action to get rid of Sure. Of uh, yeah. of paranormal activity in their homes because I'm at that point right now. Typically, you know, and you guys know how I, I am with all of this. Like it's just kind of like ah, whatever. I don't, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. You know what I mean? You just got to deal with it and, and roll with it pretty much. But this is beyond you know. And now I'm I'm actually you know taking safety precautions if, for if this were to happen again. Keeping the spare at work instead of at home. And I'm, I'll probably start to do that with other things. I don't know. Like I, 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 and then I feel like, okay, so now I'm crazy. <laughs> right? Cause if, and I don't even tell people about this because if I did, that's exactly what they would think. <laughs> you know, I, I'm not going to tell the, the locksmith guy that just made me a new key. Hey, man, yeah, pretty sure damn ghost got it. He'd have been like, hey, we'll talk to you later there, Chucko. You know, you just, uh, you know. Like, what are you supposed to do? I talked to you guys about it. That's it. Because I don't even know, you know, we're going to launch this podcast. All some people are going to be like, oh, that's old Nutto over there, you know? Like, but I'm telling you, you know, I, I wish I was making this stuff up. I do. Because that, pff, man, you could come up with all kinds of fun stuff. But I'm just rolling with the punches here. It gets weirder every turn, I swear. That, like, why the stuff goes missing, I mean, I have, you know, it just makes no I mean, and it just disappeared we, we don't send people home with our bowl set with food in it we put it in tupperware you know what i mean this isn't something like we're not handing these out so it's just super bizarre and why and then i was trying to think of like okay is there you know is there a relevancy is there a reason they would take forks and and bowls for some reason you know is there is there more to that is there you know the keys thing i think is just you know another way to frustrate me i'm pretty sure um, you know, the, the seeing the, the light, then now that's something like that. We haven't had anything like that happen until then. And, and like I said, I really, I felt that man, you know, like I, I, and I, well, I don't know how to describe that other than like goosebumps or the chills or whatever you want to call it. But I mean, when there, is there any kind of different distinction or name or, you know, what the hell was that? What do you call that? A light clicking through, you know, all four or all three cycles back to where it was while there's a ghost on the screen. So I look up and pay attention. Yeah. And did you, Aaron, did you hear, um, you know, does it have like a click where it goes click, click, click? Yes. Did you actually hear that or did you just notice the light go? Just the light. I did not hear the click, but just the light went through all four stages. Jeez. Yeah. I, I don't know if there's any specific terminology on it, but I mean, Especially that one with the timing, with the ghost on the screen and stuff like that. It, it's almost like they're trying to send you a message or basically confirm with you, yes, this is what I am and this is, you know, this is me. Yep. Okay, so what do I do? Uh, you guys got like an address I can send a letter to? You know, <laughs> dear ghost. Or if I just say it out loud in the house, are they going to hear me? You know what I mean? Like. Well, if they knew you're, if they obviously know you're there and they know that you're aware that they're there, and I think that they know that you got the message loud and clear of what they're trying to say, judging by your actions, you can speak to them directly. You know, if if you wanted them to truly go away, I, I mean, I know, like you said, you understand how people get really frustrated with this because it costs you money. Um, you're actually altering the way that you live and do things now because of this. Like you said, by taking precautions, putting spare keys, you are being disrupted. You are changing your lifestyle to get around this thing you have happening. If you wanted them truly gone, you could most likely banish them. Just tell them, you know, I need you to leave us alone, never come back, whatever, whatever. Might work, might not work, but 
I think you could communicate directly with them and get your message directly to them. Well, you know, I'll tell you what. I maybe that's what I need to do. I don't know, man. I, I just I'm conflicted. I, I don't. I don't. Something about me doesn't want to mess with anything going on, you know, behind the dimensional curtain or whatever the hell it is, you know. Like I feel like I, uh, I don't know. I feel weird about that. You know, I'm not trying to be like a wiener or anything. I just, I don't know. That seems weird. Like I would rather, I would. I mean, if I could get rid of them, I guess I would. But I am. Oh, I'm fine with just being simpatico. You know, like. Hey, you can like do the light thing. That's kind of weird, but don't take my damn keys. You know, like yeah, there's like, a line here, a decency. Okay, the bowls and forks. We got some new ones. Like wh- whatever, you know, whatever the hell. I don't know. So, but yeah, I mean, it's 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 it really makes me sound crazy when you say, you know, you're altering your life around this, and you're but you're absolutely right. I paid extra. You know, I want. I want an extra key. Yeah, and I, I think Steve's suggestion was pretty much spot on, Aaron, where it's been known to have people, you know, people get really upset over things, and, you know, things start really bothering them, and then they just verbalize it out loud. You know, you, know, you can even do it in, in the privacy of your own bedroom, you know, where the kids don't have to hear you doing it. Just just verbally state, hey, this is getting annoying. You know, we don't, we can live in, in harmony here, but just don't, continue to do these types of things you know it's like i get your message i see you're here but please stop and a lot of times that that has caused just that simple thing has caused the, the activity to stop um in you know it, it's, it's super simple you know you don't need to go and get smudge sticks or anything like that it's just literally verbally asking this thing to just kind of stop doing what it's doing you know a lot of times when we leave haunted places, uh, we will say, you know, thank you for communicating with us, uh, but you are not allowed to come home with me. You need to stay here and things like that. And uh, I think 99% of the time, they the spirits are not going to follow you home or, you know, the, they'll get the message loud and clear. And if I nailed it right in the head, just say, hey, we don't mind having you here. Um, you know, it, it's, it's cool some of the things you're doing, but don't cost me money. You know, don't harm us. And don't, you know, don't scare the kids, you know. It's no different than a house guest. You know, let's say you had a long-term house guest that was doing some annoying things. Hell of a house know? guest, Josiah. <laughs> so that's what I mean. I mean, I would kind of see it like that. You know, you're not going to say, get the hell out, you know, and be very mean about it. But you pretty much stern and say, hey, knock it off. Yeah. All right. I, I am... Uh... I'm gonna. I'll give it a try for sure, for sure. You know, I was just thinking about something funny. How much would you two guys love to have a house like this? Because you could have the the kind of like long term study that you could do. Um, you know, I, I was just thinking, man, these guys would probably love to live in my house because they can check all this stuff out. You know, but there's a reason that Zach Baggins of Ghost Adventures keeps buying up haunted locations uh, because he has direct access to a known haunted place that he can research 24-7, you know, and I'd be the same way. Hey, where are you going ghost hunting this weekend? I don't have to go anywhere. Go to my living room, you know? (laughs) No kidding. Just sit here and watch. See what happens. And you guys know all the tricks and the bells and the whistles and the different things you can do to, you know, compel them to to answer or give some sort of activity back or be able to notice things like with the light and all that. Um, You know, and I don't know that, you know, I mean, I didn't know that stuff until you guys told me on the podcast what was going on, but you know, it's, uh, this has been a weird deal, man. I got to tell you guys, I, yeah, I don't know. I'm just kind of at a point where I don't know. I'm figuring out what I need to do next, and I, I guess I'm going to try to communicate with this thing. Yeah, I think that's your best bet. I, I mean, this, the, the holy grail, aside from catching some really cool evidence, is would be, and this is something that no paranormal researcher has ever been able to accomplish, and that would be having um, a spirit do things on command, you know, uh, or, or being able to, yes, continuously, being able to rely on, them answering your request every time, you know, in a repeatable manner, and that's just never happened. But 
you know, you could uh, probably do something like that at your house, maybe. I don't want to do that at my house, Steve. <laughs> I don't want that shit around, man. You know, like, not like that. I don't want to turn my house. I mean, if that, hey, whatever. If there's some money to be made, I guess we're right off the interstate. I could move and we could run a, you know, tours through the house. Sure. If the, if it's there, it's there, I guess. But, you know, whatever. We've talked about moving to Iowa anyway, just because of Illinois' taxes. So, you know, and, and the state's broke. So, but, uh, you know, whatever. We're movable, you know, but I mean, I don't, oh, man. That that'd be that's my luck though. That would be what would happen to me, you know. Oh yeah, they got the you know the ghost out there that does things people ask it to. It's great, you know, hundred bucks a head to get in there, or whatever, you know. There you go. Yeah, you guys can uh, lease it from me and just give me a cut of the gate, and then I'll move over across the river. Perfect. Build myself a new house, a brand new house. Hopefully not on the damn graveyard or something. <sighs> I'm telling you. Yeah, uh, you know it is amazing though how, how it's gone from once every couple of months to you know now with you guys being around more and things like that it's just ramping up like crazy you know yeah and I, I do I feel horrible that this is all at your expense you know for the most part it seems like I would say ninety percent of it isn't really like oh this is a terrible headache it's more of just like wow that was weird but it's interesting to me to see all of this unfold as you look at it from a higher level, you know, just imagine from where we first started off to where we're at now, and to have the listener, from their perspective, I think it's going to be so interesting to hear that they get to kind of see a normal guy that's not into the paranormal, you know, you're not like a big ghost hunter guy or anything, no. and to see, you know, see your experiences just slowly progress into what they are now, uh, to me, I think that's going to be very interesting for them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh... Yeah, man, I don't know. I'm just, uh, I'm going to communicate or try to communicate with a ghost or a poltergeist. It's a poltergeist, right? That's the deal? Well, we don't really know. I, I mean, the poltergeist can manipulate things and, and make things happen, which has happened. But So but, a, is a poltergeist is a type of ghost, pretty much, right? Or, or paranormal something? The way, the way I've... I've read off on poltergeist. It can be triggered by a human being, and sometimes it's not even necessarily a ghost. It's more of just certain actions and things that happen that could be triggered by especially a prepubescent teenager, and more especially females. That's, I mean, that, that's been written about multiple times. So it's not necessarily like the ghost of a person who's passed, if that makes any sense. That's the difference between a poltergeist versus like an intelligent haunting, where an intelligent haunting would be, by theory, a person who has passed away and they're remaining and they're interacting with you. So that's what I would see the differences to be according to what I've read. Okay, well, and I, in, in one of the earlier episodes, you talked about the differences in more detail, and people could, when, once we get all this together, and we can always cut some of this out, what we're saying right now, but. Once we get all this together, then they'll be able. We can say which episode it is, or dub it in and stuff, and then they'll be able to go right there and say, "Oh yeah, okay." And listen to it in more detail, you know. Yeah. Yeah, but it definitely. I mean, you definitely have poltergeist activity going on. That's by definition with things moving, things turning off and on, water turning on, the truck being put in gear, keys and stuff disappearing, relocating. I mean, that's all classic poltergeist activity. So you definitely have poltergeist activity going on, but it seems like you also have an intelligent haunting that is a capable of responding to you as well as doing things to get your attention. And yeah, even to us, you know, with the response of the obelisk where it said children, like, pretty much get on command. So that, that indicates, like Steve mentioned, another type of haunting. It's like you've got a couple different types here. I think we've said that all along. Great, rocking. Sounds great. Thanks, guys. You got any more good news, guys? Come on. So, uh, let me ask you this, Aaron. I, I guess, what, what do you foresee? I, I guess, what is it that you're searching for at this point with all the recent activity happening? happening? Are you anxious for it to stop? Are you still interested in, in experiencing it as long as it doesn't get overwhelming? 
Um, or, or where do you stand right now with, with everything, or are you just confused about it right now? I'm definitely confused about it right now. I, I don't, you know, I, like I said, I'm fine with just, you know, being cool with them being around and not, you know, dealing with it as much. That's I, I don't really care. You know, that's and, and that's kind of how I felt at the beginning. It was kind of some funny stuff, weird stuff. Um, but as it's growing and getting more frequent and stuff, now I'm more like, man, I don't know. I don't know if I want to deal with this or not. <laughs> or, you yeah. know, is it going to continue to get more, you know, like more heated, more? Because I don't, you know, I'm starting to get stressed out. It's costing me money. It's costing me time, which is a big deal because uh, I don't have any of it. Sure. You know, we got five kids. We got animals we got to be taken care of. We got, I got a full-time job. Uh, you know, it, it's just a lot. So, yeah, you know, uh, I don't know. I, I'm longing for the days where it's less, but, you know, we're still home more, and like everybody is, you know, than we normally are. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. What were you going to say, bud? Oh, no, I was just going to say, maybe as things return to normal and people are out of the house more for school and work and things like that, maybe things tend to taper off on their own, you know, go back to every a few months something happening, you know. Um, maybe it's just coming to a head just with our current situation and everything, and you don't have to take any steps to get it to, to ramp down. But I can fully understand it costs you $250 this time to replace your keys. What happens when a shelf with priceless, you know, things on it falls over and they break and that costs more or your vehicle does something again, you know, and, and ends up costing you in repairs and things like that. You know, I, I get it. You know, it's, it's not something you want to wait and wait around and see these things happen. But that's why I think that conversation, it's not going to cost you a dime, you know, to have that verbal conversation. It might be a slightly awkward at first talking to the air, but I mean, maybe check that out, try it, and go from there. You know, see what happens from that point. I don't know that it would be angering to whatever it is there. I think I, I've never really heard of, you know, unless you're antagonizing it or, you know, trying to, you know, trying to be rude. I've never really heard of that type of conversation causing things to progress exactly get worse. So, I mean, that doesn't cost you a dime, Aaron, and it, it might be worth it to try it. You know what else I'm going to do? What's that? I'm going to video it. Ah, uh -huh, yeah. Very cool. Very good call. I'll video it, and obviously if anything happens, we'll have something on video. There you go. That'd be great. Plus, they're time-stamped, you know, and that's always helpful. You can always go back and say, okay, this is the very date and time that I did this, you know. so Right. And if Okay, so here's the deal. If I start talking to the... You guys are telling me to talk to the air, and I'm going to do it, which is just bat shit crazy, right? But I'm going to do it, sure. and I'm going to video it, and if there's... If something happens, then I am probably going to start making plans to get out, and I'll release this place to you guys, and you can turn it into some sort of creepy-ass wonderland. I don't care. Um... <laughs> You know, but I, I'm serious. We get this thing on video. I'm I don't know. I'll tell you what. You, you, there's shows that will most likely pay you for your story, and and we'll see you on Paranormal Witness telling your story about what happened. You know, or or one of those types of shows. And uh, yeah, so you never know. I mean, yeah. yeah the last thing I do, the last thing I'd want is for it to ramp up. But I, my heart of hearts tells me that's not going to happen. But as you're talking about videoing, it's also interesting the way my mind is thinking of it. Let's say that you're speaking to whatever it is. Who knows? It, some, something might happen in three rooms across where you don't even you're not even aware. You know, you might there might be something in a different room. So I would suggest putting as many cameras in as many locations as you can. Of course, to your ability. You know, I wouldn't go out and buy a DVR system, but you might want to put one camera in each main room or at least a phone filming. That'd be kind of interesting to see if anything happens as you're saying that take some coordination but it could be done well i will uh i will do what i can i'm not overly technologically coordinated with all that stuff 
and I'm not sure I want to bring in anybody to help me with this. I'll probably just do it on my own and not say anything about it, and we'll just see what happens. Okay. Fair and you know what you could do as well? You have access to audio equipment, um, maybe one camera with whatever room you're in, but maybe record, you know, in a few different areas at the same time, and just, you know, you if something happens, even if it's not on video, you're going to have a sound recording of it. You might get voices. You might get whatever kind of response, you know, but... But I think audio equipment might be easier for you to acquire and get a hold of and use, you know. And right. Darren, do you, do you plan on doing this while you're alone? You know, I don't know if you ever have any time at home alone. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, it's not very often, but yeah. You know, right now the kids are back in school. So far, so good there. So, okay. uh, so yeah, there's parts of uh, some of the days of the week where there's nobody home. Okay. Yeah, well, we'll be really curious to hear what happens. Yeah. And you, you never know. I, I mean, it might your your keys might be on the table the second you get done requesting that they stop. You know, I mean, I'll video that too. If I come in and my keys are on the table, I'm gonna flip out. <laughs> right. I'll be so right. pissed. I'm serious. It's gonna be, be way better for me mentally if those keys never show up, and I can just tell myself that I like somehow threw them away accidentally or or something. You know, I don't know. Whatever. Yep. Just san san uh, keep myself sane, you know, on that whole thing. This is, oh uh, man, yeah. So anyway, this is paranormally. This is my life at my house right now, uh, as we've kind of rocked through this adventure over how long. Uh, and I don't know how many episodes we have exactly, but how long have we been doing this over time span? Um, because when did you guys come to the investigation? Seven. Yeah, six seven months. We've been we've been talking about this, but we investigated it. July or yeah, right around. Uh, okay. July. So yeah, so the, you guys have even gotten to kind of keep your own little record of the different things that I'm going through here, and, and so this, and I've never really kept a timeline of any of this stuff before, and so that's interesting too to kind of see when it's happening and and what time of year and like and all of this stuff that I've learned from you guys through these podcasts. Well, I, again, the, the veil is the thinnest right around Halloween. That's the whole uh, you know theory behind Halloween and everything. And we're coming up here. We're about we're less than a month away from the uh, equinox, you know, the uh, the transition from fall into the winter. Solstice, right? The solstice, yep, yep. Hmm. Creepy time of year is what you're saying. <laughs> yes. Well, it is. That's what you're saying. It's a creepy yeah, time of year. Yep. Well, this has been another episode of Paranormally. Josiah and Steve, our paranormal investigators, join me as always. And we'll, uh, well, I guess next week we'll find out what happens when you try to talk to the air? <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thanks, Eric. Thanks for listening. You can find more episodes and all other Hot Pie Media originals baked fresh daily at our home on the web at hotpiemedia.com, the Hot Pie Media YouTube channel, or wherever you listen to podcasts.